hypnotism theory of rock and roll is that, you know, get really good and find a record label A&R person that would say, oh, you guys are the cat's meow, and we kind of sucked. I mean, we didn't suck bad, but we weren't that good. After a crashing, thunderous ending, there'd be... Oh. I just have to run, to keep it's like, what are we going to call ourselves? Let's just call ourselves Madonna. It's a catchy name. It's kind of rock and roll. But uh, Steve Hayden... performance was probably you'd grade it a 10 for energy and enthusiasm. She belted. Hey! She screamed. Shut the differences between the stage persona and who she was off stage, at least around me, was just there was more vulnerability. There was also the softer kind of, you know, I don't, I'm not quite sure what to do about this. I never hear her be that way in public. I met Madonna in 1979. I'd been working on a film at the time, An Artificial Light, which was about a group of disparate characters. Everybody in the film was essentially themselves. All the people wrote their own parts. And hers was a story about herself, using snippets of her poetry, almost fantasies of her transforming from walking down the street to this highly coiffed rock star. I mean, you get out of bed and you scratch your head, you stroke the cat, but she's got a rat. So you take a bath and go down the drain, but you're not afraid because you're not insane. She was enjoyable to watch because you knew you were getting the real person and you weren't getting a veneer she put on. She had a fairly sober childhood, and at this point, she's willing to do what she had to do. She came up with the line, I'll do anything for money. I'll do anything for money, because money is my love. Which was sort of the drift of the whole film, in the sense of having to get things done to get to another place. Don't look back. Don't think about what you're doing. Just mix it up. We're talking about more than, than a close friend that everybody's, you know, just killed senselessly. Madonna. Madonna began to develop her own songwriting, laying bare her own emotions and relationships in the lyrics for songs like Hot House Flower. Her private and public persona were beginning to merge. Hey, shut the fuck up! Hi, Madonna. I'm from Detroit, and I'm 21. Um, in Florida? Right, doing a tour in Florida. Traveling around with my crew of dancers. There's three other dancers. What the dancing? Yeah. Well, I I um I sing my rec. Well, I have 24 track songs that I sing live to, so the music sounds a lot like the record. And uh, I choreograph like scenarios for each of the songs, and they pretty much dance behind me. And then when I'm not singing, I kind of join in with them. What kind of scenarios? Well, it depends. Like if the songs like <clears throat> like I the song that that's like out on the radio right now, it's called Everybody, and it's about getting people to dance and lose their inhibitions. So, it's, so I'm, I like taunt my dancers and get them to get up and do different things on their own. And then if it's a love song, it's kind of like, you know, we're relating to each other in a, fl a flirtatious kind of way. So I don't know, just kind of create simple little things to go along with music. Okay. I don't think this is going to work out. Yeah, me neither. Don't? Look, Danny. You play games and I play games. We're both just too good at it. You didn't expect anything real to happen between us, did you? So we're just going to give this up. Is that what you're talking about? You said it wasn't going to work out. Think your speech. Yeah, so where were you last night? You're supposed to meet me at 7 o'clock. I waited 45 minutes in the library. She did? Man, see what I mean? You asked me out to see how long I'd wait for you when you wouldn't show up. That's not true. I had a rehearsal for months. Yeah, months. sure. You, you had a rehearsal the night we went to the movies, remember? You canceled it, remember? Look, Danny, let's just make like two ships to pass in the night, okay? Not okay. Carol, what was that night we went to the movies? Yeah, vaguely. I don't know. 
Look, there's nothing you can do that's going to make me forget about what you did last night, so forget it. You've got to let me try. No, no, I'm not going to do anything but pay taxes, die, and pass my midterm exam. Just give me one more chance. I'm begging. Would you get up off the floor? Okay, if you just give me one more chance. Okay. Where? Anywhere. Meet me in the library. What time? Seven o'clock. I'll be waiting. Hey, Danny. Yeah? You know, we could make this work. All right. Come on, Brooke Shields. <laughs> yeah? Mm hmm I'm a contemporary singer, female singer. So how does it feel of coming, well, I, I say out of nowhere, so, to now sort of suddenly everyone wants to sort of interview Madonna? That's what happens when anyone gets successful, though. Yeah? Yeah, well, you know, first they don't want to hear from you, and then your record gets big, and then everyone wants to know about you. But then as an artist, I mean, a lot of people, I know different groups and lead singers and songwriters mm -hmm. who become slightly bitter towards the people who didn't recognize them initially. How will you cope with that? I, d I don't feel bitter. I don't feel bitter. I think, you know... I just, sometimes I might say, well, you know, I told you so, or I might think in my mind things. I don't feel bitter. I don't have that kind of negative feeling. Right. Well, as I say, Holiday is a great single. I think we're going to hear a lot more of you. I hope so. so. Congratulations. Thank you. And thanks for doing the interview. You're welcome. Just a couple of wide shots, please, Ian. If you can stay there for a second, man. Whew. <sighs>
Well, when I was growing up, all the Motown music I listened to, Diana Ross was a real big inspiration for me. And right now, I think probably Michael Jackson is the biggest inspiration for me. When I was young, I grew up with Motown music. I grew up with Michael Jackson's 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 music. <laughs> I guess you understood. Um, how did you mean? I already Sorry. knew. I already knew. <laughs> um, he's a DJ in a club, and I brought him my record, and I asked him to play it, and then he fell in love with me. Club <laughs> DJ. <laughs> をやっててからがそれで彼女のレコードアルバムを持ってきてあの流してもらうためにそれがきっかけなんですって会いのそれから彼の方が彼女を気になったそうですそうですかあの彼から何か影響を受けたってことはありますかえ、what way has he influenced
He's made me more, more aware of um, the ups and downs of the music industry, the business aspect, and he's made me, um, he's, well, he's, he's my lover, so he's inspired me in that way, and that, that just sort of shows in the music. ゲームを買いの、レコードビジネス、ショービジネスの世界のあの激しいアップスエンダウンズの厳しさを感じてみ教えてくれたそうです。いいですね。そういうふうにあの仕事でね、どうしていろんなことを学んでくれるとすごく
they wanted a slow, you know, love song, ballad kind of thing where they're dancing, where, you know, which is with, about a couple meeting. And that's exactly what this love song is. Thanks for the dance. But audiences cannot live by slow songs alone, so Madonna rocks out with The Gambler. The faster songs, Gambler, is really the girl's point of view, because she, you know, she doesn't, she's like an unstoppable person, she doesn't really need this guy. And you've got a, you're involved in a movie that's going to be coming out shortly. Mm -hmm. It's called Vision Quest, and... The people who produced the movie Flashdance and did the soundtrack are also doing this movie. It's not a movie about a dancer, thank goodness, because everyone's doing movies about dancers. It's a movie about a wrestler, and it's really great, and it's going to be out in the summer.